Hello, Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render a candle using RenderMan. Um, and we're going to create all of the geometry just using uh, primitives rather than using like Maya fluids or something like that. Um, and if you wanted to know how to do it with Maya fluids, um, I might do a tutorial a little bit later on on how to do that. Um, and yeah, um, this is based on something that Dylan Sisson posted on the Render Man website um, a couple of years ago, back in 2015. I thought I'd just show a video version of it, uh, just so it's a little bit easier for people that might be new to Render Man to follow. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a candle stick. So I'm just going to use a cylinder, and I'm going to make this sort of a um, Sort of like a, a tea light one almost, just a little bit fatter and, and wider than it is long. Yeah, something like that. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to subdivide this and we're going to add in a, we're going to go to edge mode and then shift right click and go to insert edge. Smooth those edges out. Yeah, something like that effect. All right. And then just um, we'll grab that center vertex, move it down a touch, and then we'll also grab, I'll just make sure I've got camera base selection on, grab some random vertexes, and I've just added um, soft selection on by tapping B. All right, and we'll just Move those down a touch, just to give some variation to the silhouette. And you could even um, you could even create, say, an edge here. Uh, and then we can go to edge and turn off soft selection. Select like that, scale it in, and move it down so it's kind of creating a bit of a, a pocket and I'll grab that edge scale it in a bit just so the candle sort of got a bit more variation to it and we'll just grab that center vertex and move it down a touch again all right so that's kind of candle-ish uh, generally I'd work in quads but just because I'm modeling this in my I can't be bothered sort of going and retopologizing it um, normally I'd model in, in um, ZBrush, but um, just to keep this quick, I'll do it all here. So we've got a candlestick, roughly. Um, and I know it's not the most amazing looking thing, but it will do. All right, so uh, let's create a wick. Um, same thing again, we'll create a cylinder. And we'll just scale that down. You can do this a number of ways. I'm just going to do it with simple primitives, though. Scale down until you get it to be the size that you want. I think something like that will be good. All right, uh, let's add in some more edges. And one down the bottom there, and one in the center. All right, we've got a vertex mode. Uh, I'll turn off camera selection. And I'm just gonna sort of Move that like that, and move that out like that. Just to create a bit of a um, curve to it. So now when it's subdivided, it doesn't look like a stiff thing. All right, so uh, let's add some shaders to this. Actually, we'll just chuck a light in real quick as well. So I've got a render man and uh, create a uh, rectangle light rather. And I think 25 will do. All right, and then we will grab our candlestick and we'll add a Pixar Disney shader to it. Uh, so in the attributes, let's. Uh, I'm going to use both diffuse and I'm going to use single scattering for this. So this is going to create some subsurface scattering for our candle, um, and I'm also going to just blend some diffuse. So it, it's a little bit uh, less. Uh, it's a little bit less unwieldy to um, deal with when you've got a um, diffuse channel as well. So uh, let's just jump. We want sort of like a tan color, something like that. And then we use the same color for um, the single scatter color. And uh, we'll increase the gain to 1.0. Um, and the internal color will be um, a little bit more orange and a little bit more saturated. We'll sort of see how that looks. 
And let's just run an IPR and see how that is working out. Let's just change that color to uh, that um, shader to be called the candle stick. Let's increase that uh, multiple meme free paths in like 20. And just increase that light. The light is going to be less important um, in a moment once we've got some illumination coming from the actual candle itself. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look too bad so far as subsurface scattering goes. Uh, we also need to get some um, specularity happening. So we'll just chuck in just a bit of specularity. And it's wax, so it should be a little bit rough, uh, but also it's technically kind of wet. So you sort of need to strike a balance between it being, you know, a sharp specularity and um, and a rough specularity. So 0.3 is looking not too bad for this one. And you can see as I reduce the gain, you don't want it to look completely translucent like that with just the specularity channel. And if you're finding you're wanting, you're wanting a little bit more um, subsurface scattering, you could back the gain off on the diffuse channel. Um, just beware that the lower you go, obviously, the more translucent it will appear, which it's not meant to be completely translucent, obviously. All right, that will do for that. Let's add a shader to our candlestick. Uh, yeah, the wick, rather. Um, so we'll just add a shader in. We'll call this wick. Um, and I'm going to open the hyper shader for this. All right, so we're going to use a ramp. So Pixar ramp. I'm hitting tab and typing that in. Uh, we'll run that into the diffuse color channel and the ramp is going to be black to it's going to be a T ramp as well uh, it's going to have a red tip and then we'll just sort of make it look like that and um, we won't be able to see this because it's using a Pixar color node but um, if we IPR all right so you can just see that the red is on the top there so we just want to yeah, so just adjust it till you get it to the point where you want it to be. Um, make sure it's a pretty high value um, so it stands out a bit against the flame um, and that will do for that. All right, now let's make a flame. So we're going to go to Polygon's tab and create a sphere to start off with. Um, and we're going to reduce the subdivisions down to uh, maybe, maybe six, I think we'll do it. And we'll smooth subdivide that by pressing three. And then we're going to go to vertex selection. Uh, we don't want camera based selection, so that's fine. So we need to make it pointy. So we'll grab these top vertex and move them up and scale them in. And maybe move these ones down. So it's got that sort of thing happening. Then we'll move these guys up, scale them in. So basic, basically it should be sort of spherical at the bottom um, and then sort of taper in at the top. Yeah, something like that for now we'll do. And then we'll go to vertex selection again and we'll just add a bit of curve to that. All right, uh, that looks okay. Um, I'd spend a lot more time on that, but um, this will do for now. So. We're going to duplicate this, um, but first we need to rename it, otherwise we're going to lose track of everything. So in the outliner, let's call this, um, this is going to be the glow, and then we're going to create a smaller version of it. So we'll just select it and hit Control D, and this is going to be the flame. So how it's going to work is uh, the glow is going to be a volume, and then the um, flame is going to be a mesh light. So we'll just, I'll just change it to that so you can see what's happening. So let's scale our flame in just so it's roughly inside the glow. Yeah, that should be fine. All right, so uh, select our glow and we're gonna create a uh, volume for that. So uh, that's this button here, create pixel volume. All right, and um, we're gonna change the diffuse color to the a uh, sort of orangey red somewhere around there and the emit color could be the same and then the density will start with 0.1 see what that looks like and then we'll grab the flame and we'll make a mesh light from that just change that to be called flame light 
and we're gonna change the color. We'll actually use a ramp on this in a second, but just for now, um, I'm just gonna make it just ugly yellow. And we'll run an IPR, see what that looks like. All right, so you can see the effect that's sort of happening now. Um, the flame is a bit too big, I think, so we'll scale that down. Yeah, something like that. It's not perfect, but it will do. Um, and we should also get that flame to be just a touch closer to the wick. All right, we're getting there. So now you can see we've got this glow coming off this flame, which is the mesh light, and both of them are emitting color. Um, so when we zoom out, you should be able to see that the illumination has sort of changed, especially if I just hide that light. There you go. Um, and we need to actually create one more thing though. Uh, we're just gonna create another polygon sphere. And this can be 10 by 10, um, subdivide that. And basically this is gonna be the, the blue part of the flame. Um, so let's call this flame um, blue. And go to wireframe again and just get that to sort of be there. It should be relatively close to the same sort of size as the bottom um, of the flame and the glow. Uh, and then we're gonna select that flame blue again. Um, and we're gonna go to render man and we're gonna create another mesh. Uh, sorry, another um, uh, pixel volume. And this pixel volume is gonna be called blue. Oh, it's gonna be called flame blue. Uh, and the diffuse color is gonna be like a neon blue. Um, and then the emit color is gonna be the same. Point one. Make sure you change the actually the density float, not the max density. So point one actually looks fine. It's getting a nice blend between the color of the glow and the color of the flame. And then it's mixing nicely with our wick as well. I think it just needs to move up a touch though. Yeah, so it should roughly be inside your glow, otherwise um, it'll look a little bit weird. All right, we're getting there. So uh, the last thing we need to fix is our flame color. Um, so I'm gonna do this a little bit different than the way Dylan did it. Uh, you wanna grab the flame light and in the hyper shade, we'll just map that out. And then for the color, we're just gonna run a Pixar ramp. And we're gonna put the black at the top there, and this is gonna be a T ramp as well. Um, and it's gonna start with a sort of, well actually it's gonna start with a blue, sort of similar to the, um, the blue glow that we had before. And then it's gonna be brighter in the center. And then orangey towards the top and then black at the very top. Um, if you look at a flame, they sort of um, shade themselves where the flame turns into smoke. So it sort of obscures the top of the flame a little bit. So it just helps the realism uh, just a little bit to have that. And also we'll need to apply the result RGB into the texture color of our flame light shape. Um, so now when we run that IPR, see that looks a little bit different to that. Uh, not perfect, it's a little bit probably low uh, value color wise at the moment. But um, you can see that having the blue at the bottom there is accentuating that just a little bit more. Um, and then the black at the top there is only just visible but it, it will make a little bit of a difference. Um, so we can just go into the attribute editor and go to our ramp. And um, I'm just going to slide that top one up. I might just add another node in the center there and make that a little bit whiter. All right, something like that. Now, obviously this is not gonna hold up under close scrutiny. Um, however, uh, if you're just set dressing, something like that does look pretty effective. Um, and that's really all there is to it. Uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into sort of setting up subsurface scattering on the candle and stuff. Uh, you could probably play with the colors a bit more. I think this is looking a little bit too washed out. Um, probably could add some saturation into the um, into the diffuse channel possibly, or maybe even into the single scatter. Yeah, that's a bit washed out. Increase the value. 
uh, but this is more just as to show you the steps on how to get it created rather than get it looking perfect um, and also with a different shaped cam you'll get different results obviously if I made this a normal sort of shaped candle sort of like that you'll see that um, it can be a little bit uh, easier to deal with and sort of looks a little bit better straight off the bat to be honest um, I probably should have spent a little bit more time modeling that but you see that it does the trick um, with all these elements combined you get something looking pretty effective with very little work and I'll just show you what it looks like with the um, mesh light gone so it doesn't really produce enough light for it to be self-sustaining um, for illumination but um, with that light on uh, with a or if you just had like a, um, a light link to it um, it might look a little bit better and uh, easier to shade in your environment but um, yeah that's that's all there really is to it chuck a couple of those in your scene in the background there and you might get something really romantic happening um, so hopefully that's helped anyone else, uh, anyone out that was looking at that on the uh, Pixar web on the Render Man website. I wasn't quite sure how to put it all together. It's a, it's actually a really cool way of doing it, and um, thanks Dylan for putting that up. Um, hopefully you don't mind me showing the secrets of uh, building it from scratch. Um, but Dylan's one actually looks a whole lot better than this. So make sure you go and check out the Still Life uh, page on for it was actually for Render Man 20, but it's the same thing still works for 21 i'll put a link in the description for that um, otherwise that's it for this one if you liked the tutorial make sure you click the like button so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as i do a couple of tutorials every week for things like render man and other cg products if you'd like to stay up to date further uh, check out the facebook page link in the description also thank you very much for watching and happy rendering